this on my heart tonight is as we are preparing as in our in our nation to celebrate our Declaration of Independence from Mother England, um, I think it's imperative that you and I, as individuals, that we as the church and that we as a nation, while it's good for us to declare our independence and be free in this country, I believe it's imperative that we realize and acknowledge that we must declare our dependence upon God. To have your Bibles, I ask that you turn to Psalm 86, a rather lengthy text. I would willing like for us to read the entire 86th Psalm. But as we go through reading through the text, please pay attention to what David is acknowledging. Uh, David repeatedly here in this text is, is saying, God, I'm dependent upon you. Psalm 86, beginning in verse 1, David writes, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul. Now as we go through, I, I, I just want you to, to, to realize David is stating the proper relationship and realizing his need, realizing where David fell in the pecking order um, with God. And I, I think too many times we as God's children, we lose sight of who God is and who we are. But again, he says, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. Show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, hast hoped me and comforted me. If correctly read, that's the 86th Psalm. And again, as we pause um, and as we prepare to celebrate on this 4th of July our independence, I hope and pray that you and I will have a, a mind like David had as he pens these words here in this 86th Psalm. Throughout our text, David repeatedly declares his dependence upon God. And I believe it is, it is in our nature, it is in my nature, it's in your nature, it's in our nature as children of God, even though we have been born again, it is in our nature to want to declare our independence. Um, and turn over to Jeremiah. 
I think Jeremiah lays it out about as plain as, as, as it can be laid out is in Jeremiah chapter 17. Um, notice how Jeremiah contrasts us being dependent and recognizing our need to be dependent and to trust in Him. And the songs, I, I, my heart overflowed with the songs that we sang. What a friend we have in Jesus. Is that not acknowledging and recognizing that we are dependent upon Him? Uh, the song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. I, I don't know if Daddy and Brother David had a conversation before I got here and Daddy told them what I was planning to preach. I didn't tell Brother David. How did he pick that song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms? That whole song is about us being dependent and relying and trusting in God. But in Jeremiah chapter 17, beginning in verse 5, and just listen to the contrast that's laid out here. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Have you ever trusted in man? I have. I want you to see the contrast that Jeremiah lays out here. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, if we ever trust in man, if we trust in the strength of man's arm, we have departed from the Lord. We have lost that intuition that we are dependent upon God. Verse 6 says, For he shall be like the heath in the desert. This is talking about uh, a, a child of God that trusts in man. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. That's about as bleak as a picture that can be painted for us. And that's what happens. If we trust in man, we will be like the heath in the desert. Verse 7, I want to see the contrast though now as, as Jeremiah says in verse 7, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Notice the contrast of what was that desolate place that was described for the man that uh, trusts in man versus the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That's about as clear a contrast as, as God's Word gives us to show if you are dependent upon yourself, if you're dependent upon man, if you're dependent upon your parents, if you're dependent upon your spouse, if you're dependent upon the government, if you're dependent upon your bank account, cursed is that man. Now how is that? How is it that we can be cursed? Brothers and sisters, everything that I just named that has to do with man, it can be gone like that. Just like that. And if we're trusting in the wrong thing, if we're trusting in man, did you know that it is God that gives us our next breath? And I can remember, you know, as a child growing up, and some of you, old, I'm, I'd say this in reverence to you older men, but you're not what you used to be as far as your physical strength. Those of you that are fairly new to the church probably don't know what I mean whenever I call Brother David Rambo. Brother David is not Rambo anymore. Amen. I can remember as growing up thinking that my father was Superman. I would brag to my friends, "Oh my, your daddy can do that. Well, my daddy can do it better. It didn't matter what it was. And now the tide is turning on me as I approach 50. My son is, I'm, I'm about 5'9". I won't tell you how much I weigh. But my son now is about 6'2 and weighs almost as, if not more than me, fluctuates day to day with him. But I think he realizes that his father is not as strong as he once thought that his father was. 
I don't know how many of you lost money in, in, with the stock market crash and the, and the crash of our economic system here in America back in 2008, 2009. How many trust in your retirement account? How many of you trust in your pension? All you've got to do is look at, keep up with the current news. There are states that are losing their pensions. My balance in my retirement account is worth less today than it was back in 2008. And I haven't taken any money out of it. What are we trusting in? What are we depending on? You know, and as I was contemplating this, our relationship, we need to, we need to keep that mentality that David had in, in our text in Psalm 86. And the fact that our, our relationship was, with God is that of a child to a parent. It's like that of a sheep to a shepherd. And just watching these two young ladies on this front side, Chad's daughters, I don't know their names, but watching them leaning on their father as they walked in. That same trust that these two young ladies have for their father is the same trust that we need to have upon our Heavenly Father. And too many times we lose sight of that. We lose sight of the fact that we are mere children and He is our Father. Too many times we act like that rebellious child that thinks, well, I've got it all figured out. And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. But how many of you, when you hit your teenage years or your early 20s, thought, Mom and Dad, i got it figured out. I really don't need you anymore. We've lost that innocence of a child respecting the parent and trusting the parent, knowing that, not realizing that parent knows more or knew more than we did and that they were looking out for our good. And the same trust and dependence that a, she that a sheep has on its shepherd. We are sheep. Jesus is our shepherd. And too often we lose sight of that. You know, we are dependent, as I mentioned, for our very next breath. The very beating of our heart is dependent upon God upholding us and sustaining us. We are dependent on God for very, very life. We're dependent on God for our very being. We're dependent upon God for our sustenance. And just, just sit there and think about exactly what all it is that you and I are dependent upon God. As the as the songwriter as the psalm writer here in, in Psalm eighty six mentioned, that God was his help in trouble. Who do you call on when you're in trouble? We're dependent upon him for love. Did you know that we can't love others without the love of God being in us? We're dependent upon him for forgiveness. We're dependent upon him for mercy. And so often, we as God's children, we want to think of ourselves as independent. We want to think of ourselves as self-sufficient. Go into any bookstore and you'll find books on how to become a self-made man. I've, I've heard people claim that. And I probably, I may not have said that I was a self-made man. I certainly have thought it before in my lifetime. You know, any time I've ever thought that, God has brought me down to my knees. Oh, that we would remember just how dependent we are upon God. Realize that He is God and we are nothing but weak men and women. Realize that He is strong and we are weak. Realize that He is our Lord and we are nothing but servants. Oh, how we like to flip that around so often. If we lose our perspective of what our relationship is to God and when we lose that perspective of, of that He is God, that He is verily King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Creator of this earth. And He's given us an instruction manual that we might live by. Why do we seem to forget how dependent we are upon Him? 
why do we tend to forget that He knows best? And I believe Daddy hit on this this morning. But it's amazing in our country today how we are just constantly devolving and alienating God in every facet of our life. Whether it be in our personal lives in the church. Why is it there's no distinction between the church today and the world? In most cases, I'm talking about the church in general. Used to, if you took a poll on Christians in the church on abortion, it was greatly higher for those that thought that abortion was wrong. Today when you poll, there's no difference in the church and the world. And pick any social issue that you want to pick. We're rapidly, and why is it that we're rapidly falling away from God, even in the church, even among Christianity, it's because we've stopped realizing our dependence upon God. That His way is better than our way. That His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Oh, how we are, just, we are so prone to trust in ourselves, to trust in man. True peace. Think about it. True peace can only come from God. Are you, who are you dependent upon for peace? What does the world offer? Does the world tell us that it has a way if you want to find peace? Get you a big bank account. Get you a big house. Get you a nice car. Get you a good paying job. Guess what? None of that brings peace. Once you seek out all those things, then what does the world have to offer? You're still not finding peace. You're working yourself to death to pay for all these things that you've gotten. What does the world then offer? Alcohol? Drugs? Why is it that we have such a drug epidemic in our country today? It's because everybody, so many people are seeking peace in the wrong areas. We have lost sight of the fact that we are dependent upon God. Right, just, just pause for just a few moments and think about the, the many different ways. How specifically am I? How specifically are you dependent upon God? I've already mentioned a few things, but think about Him being our provider. Does He not provide the very rain that I hope and pray is falling outside right now? Who is it that makes it rain? God does. Who is it that provides every natural blessing that we enjoy in our country in such great abundance today? The food, the clothing, the shelter. You know, we were driving over and it, it was pouring down rain and Olivia, after about 10 miles, she said, Daddy, how can you drive in this? It's bad. I said, well, it's a lot better than if we were on horseback trying to get away cross, isn't it? Can you imagine us being out in this weather? Simple thing of, of having a vehicle Beat right. Then I said it in a beach riding a bicycle over here. <clears throat> Who gives us the luxuries in this life that we have? God does. He provides for us. Have you ever reached a point in your life where you thought, I've, I've made it? I can remember when I was in college thinking, wow, if I can just ever make X amount of money, I've got it made. Ever thought that? Maybe even after you got out of school or you've been working for 10 or 15 years. Oh, if I can just ever make this. And then you get there and guess what? What all it was cracked up to be. We're always, that is man's way. We're always looking. Talking about the natural man. We're never content. The natural man is never content with what God has promised that He would provide for us. God is our prov provider. Philippians 4.19, Paul says, But my God shall supply all your need. Not just a portion of your need. Not all of your wants. I, the, my God will shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory. Has God not promised us, I will take care of you. 
I, I, I probably said this during the meeting here back in February, but if you look as a financial advisor, there is no way that I could explain to somebody what my family has been through over the last two years. How that my salary could be about a third of what it was two years ago. Which yet God has provided. Far and above, exceeded what I could have ever hoped for. Now, do I, do, I, do I drive a 2006 Toyota van that's about to, it might hit 300,000 miles on this trip? But did he provide a way for me to come over in that van today? In, in comfort, with air conditioning blowing, the wind or the rain not hitting us? Has God promised His people, do what I tell you to do, and I will take care of you. How often do we forget that? So are we, we need to remember that we are dependent upon Him because He is our provider. Of all the natural blessings, but what about the spiritual blessings? What about the freedoms that we have to, uh, to worship freely as we so choose? God is our provider. And as we go through these, I hope and pray that every day, when you start every day, and listen, there are so many, there are so many I won't even get to this, but there are so many reasons. God, this is God speaking here and telling us to do these things, recognize that you are dependent upon me. And then when we do it, oh, the blessings and benefits that will come to us whenever we do what He says. If I start every day off realizing, God, I am dependent upon you. God, I'm trusting that You will provide everything that I need, everything that my family needs. I'm starting the day off with the right perspective that I am dependent upon Him as my provider. So many times we men kind of like to stick our chest out and say, I'm, I'm the provider for my family. Yes, we are to be doing that, but who is it that gives you the strength to go out and do your job every day. God does. Listen, there are some times that I feel like, I mean, my body feels like sometimes, I can, I'm, I'm not even 50 yet. My body sometimes feels like I can't get out of bed. And the days that I can get out of bed without my feet hurting, without my knee hurting, without my back hurting, without my neck hurting, you know what? When I have the right perspective, I'm going to start the day off saying, thank you, Lord. I don't have to go take an aspirin this morning. God is my provider. And I am dependent upon God as my provider. The second thing that I want you to just consider, a specific way that we are dependent upon God, is God is my healer and my physician. Now, I know that some of you have dealt with the loss of a loved one, some in the past week, some in the past month. And I believe I know those of you well enough that have lost someone to know that even though they're not here, that God is the great physician. Because if they're not here with you, I know two the two specific ones that I'm thinking here in this congregation, you know exactly where your loved one is right now. And has He not healed them? Isn't it amazing that we can depend upon God Almighty as our great physician? Yes, God has blessed modern science to provide us with different medicines that will make us feel better. But who is it Every time there's a new invention or some new drug or new procedure to fix the heart or the brain or any other body part, who is it that blessed the doctors to make that finding? God is. And the dreaded C word, cancer. It's amazing when I see, and, and I don't know, I don't, 
I don't know what I, I, I'll just be honest with you. I hope and pray that if I'm ever diagnosed with cancer or my spouse or one of my children, that I will remember my dependence upon God as the great physician. I've got a good friend in Tifton who is younger than I am who's battling cancer. And it doesn't look promising at this point. Emory has watched, has basically uh, stated that they don't know what else to do. MD Anderson has already stated that they don't know anything else that they can do. But I'm amazed at his faith. About three weeks ago, I was visiting with him. And as I was leaving, I let him know that we were praying for him. He said, Marty, he said, I don't know that I'm going to make it. He said, I'm not giving up. I want to live. I want to see my two children grow up. I want to spend time with my wife. But here's what he said, and this shows how we can be dependent upon God, even at a time like that. He said, but you know what, Marty? I'm not scared. Marty, I know who bought me. I know who paid for me. And I know where I'm going to be if something doesn't happen. I know God can heal me, and if He doesn't heal me, I know where, where I'll be. And He said, you know what? I'm going to be a far better place, and I will be healed whenever I'm with Him. So even in death, do you see how that God is the great physician? Same thing happened this week. Another dear friend of mine who lost his life to cancer, younger than me, uh, I banked him, and I watched... Him and his wife and two little girls. Now those, it was about seven years ago that he succumbed to cancer. Got a phone call from his wife Wednesday night late that her mother had just been diagnosed with myeloma, uh, with multiple myeloma. And she was distraught, not so much for herself, but for, for those two little girls. One is now a fresh, about to become freshman in college, the other one is uh, beginning her 11th grade year. Then when I saw the mother Friday, visiting with her, I was cutting her grass and she had come outside and I was talking to her and I just walked up and put my arms around her. And I've been working outside for a pretty good while so I wasn't smelling real good I'm sure. But I put my arm around her and just tried to comfort her. Did you know that she then comforted me? She told me the exact same thing that this other gentleman that I told you about. She said, Marty, she said, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to battle it. I know what's coming. I know what my body's about to go through. She said, but I am worried about my daughter. And I'm worried about my two granddaughters. And she said, but Marty, even if the doctors can't help me beat this, I'm not scared. She recognized, and she's dependent. God may not heal her body this side. She will be healed. God is my healer. He's my physician. Another way that we're dependent upon God, He is my comforter. There's a sign that I'm sure every one of you have seen, and I believe I've mentioned it from the pulpit here before. N O God, N O Peace. No God, no peace. And then right below that it says K N O W, 
know God, K-N-O-W, peace. Are we dependent upon God for the peace and for the comfort? That peace that passeth all understanding. That peace that has comforted you ladies that are here tonight. That peace that is comforting those two individuals that are battling cancer. It is God's comforting arms being wrapped around them that they can stand there in the midst of their trial in this lifetime and say, I'm okay. And that peace, that comfort that can only come from Him. Do you see how it passeth all understanding? It makes no sense to the natural man how somebody can be in the midst of a storm like that knowing the probability after they battle it for this long that the odds aren't on their side if you're a betting person. But yet they are, they are still out testifying. The first man that I was telling you about, we had a prayer service in Tifton a couple of weeks ago. And it was amazing for him to get up and testify God is good. In the midst of the storms, God is good. So God is. we depend upon God because He is our provider. We, we depend upon God because He is our healer and our physician. We depend God upon God because He is our comforter. What about how that we depend upon God as our counselor? How we depend upon God as our guide. Those are really two separate things, but I, I tried to tie them together because I didn't have time to do any more. That song, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Are you dependent upon God guiding you in your life? Or are you trusting in yourself? Thinking that you've got all the answers? Parents, do you need guidance in raising your children? I've got three children and thank the Lord they're not as bad as I was. But did you know that all three of them are completely separate individuals with how they think, what makes them tick? And I need wisdom in how to mold them and make them into the young adults. God is my guide. God is my counsel. We won't turn to them in Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah talks about God being our counselor. It's Isaiah 46, 9 through 11. The list goes on. We could spend the rest of this week talking about how we depend upon God. We depend upon God as my protector. Do you know who it is that keeps His protective hedge about us as we're going to and fro and doing the things that we do? It's God. We depend upon God as our Father. We depend upon God as our King. We depend upon God as our Deliverer. We depend upon God as our Intercessor. Do you realize that we could not go to God in prayer without having an intercessor between us and God? And that's Jesus Christ. And that intercessor is also our great high priest. Isn't it amazing to know that we have Jesus interceding on our behalf? You know, as I've dealt with, with a lot of things over the past year with with uh, other people that are sick and going through rough times. You reach a point when you just have to admit to them, I don't know what you're going through. I may have lost the same thing that you're going through. Or I may have lost, if your grandmother just passed away, I can say I've lost two grandmothers. I still don't know what other people are going through. Thanks be to God, we have a God. We have Jesus interceding on our behalf. 
And Jesus is touched with your infirmities. What does that mean? I may not know. Your pastor may not know. Your spouse may not know. Your children may not know. Your parents may not know what you are going through. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ knows exactly what you're going through. We're dependent upon God as our intercessor. We're dependent upon God as our high priest. We're dependent upon God as our refuge. We're dependent upon God as our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. In closing, think about this. We are dependent upon God as our Savior. Too often we forget that. Not just in an eternal sense, but how that He saves us each and every day of our lives from things that we don't even recognize, we don't even realize. Wow, God just saved me from something. Whether it be a temptation, whether it be an auto accident, we don't know how many times a day God saves us from our own selves sometimes. But what a blessing it is to know that we are dependent. It's not me that's getting Marty Mullis to the eternal heaven. It's not your pastor. It's not your parents. It's not being baptized. It's not joining the church. It's not living a life that was good enough to get you there. Nothing that you or I do has the ability to save us in an eternal sense. Thanks be to God for a Savior who is willing to lead glory and was willing to come into this world that He suffered just like we suffer. He was tempted just like we are tempted, yet He lived a perfect life. Then He was willing to die at the cross of Calvary. He willingly shed His blood Not because we are good enough. Not because we accepted Him. Not because of your last name. But because of His great mercy and love wherewith He loved us. Think about this. Acts 17.28 says, For in Him, that is for in God, in Him we live and move and have our being. I can pray that yes, we can rejoice and celebrate this day that we, our nation has set aside in remembrance of our independence from Great Britain. But above that, we have reason to celebrate. Why? Because we have a God that we can depend on. I hope and pray that you and I, as individuals, that we as churches, that we as a nation, will acknowledge and emphatically state each and every day of our lives, God, I am dependent upon you. It's my prayer for Christ's sake.